What's going on everybody? My name's Austin Ariel. Welcome back to my channel or if you're new, welcome to the channel as a whole. Today I'm going through the Mazda MX-5 Miata. This one in Grand Touring trim and it is a 2021 and this one was lent to me by Mazda for the week. So today I'm going to go through this car and tell you why Miata is always the answer. So without further ado, Let's get to the review. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I hope you like the content that you see. And if you do, feel free to give a subscribe. And if you guys like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up. But really quick, I do wanna let you guys know that I do have a TikTok now, and it's gonna be a little bit more generalized on car stuff, whether it's about my Stinger, my Acura, press cars that I get, or just cars from people that I am friends with in the community, especially the car community here in Atlanta, which is actually pretty big. So um, definitely give that a follow. I'll link it in the description, but I'll also give a screenshot of it on the screen here. So I wanna let you guys know that. And also don't forget to follow my Instagram. It's just my name, Austin Ariel. So again, thank you guys for the support. Let's get back to the review. So this Miata, also known as the ND chassis, is quite something different from what we're used to in Miata. So for one, the front end is a lot more aggressive in this one. So up front, you're gonna have full LED headlights that are actually fully adaptive. So you got automatic high beam assist. You're also gonna have auto leveling and they also swivel with the steering. So you have that. You do have a small little LED strip embedded into the corner here and then incandescent bulbs for the indicators. Down here, you do have running lights that are LED. So really cool stylistically. It fits in with their design language here, Mazda. Now up front, you do have this gloss black area here, and then of course, open inlets here to feed the four cylinder motor. Now, Mazda badge and chrome. It's actually, I think this is probably one of the perfect proportions for the actual front end. It looks really nice. And then on top of that, let's talk about this color. This color is called Soul Red. And this color is probably one of my favorite reds of any car company ever. It is beautiful. It's got a lot of depth to it and just looks good overall. So tell me what you guys think about that. So, and then finally down here, you do have this plastic piece, kind of like a splitter. It's not a whole splitter, but it looks good stylistically. And because it's painted or not painted rather, um, it'll actually be pretty durable. So it's interesting to see that. The hood is pretty bulging right around the wheel arches. So it gives it a more muscular look, but you don't really refer to Miatas as muscular, but this one you do. Really quick, I do want to point out that right there, you do have a side mounted indicator light instead of on the mirror. It's a little bit different, and I'm interested of why Mazda decided not to just put an LED strip on the actual mirror itself. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. So because this is a grand touring trim, you do have this wheel set here. So these are gonna be 17 inch wheels wrapped in Potenza tires. So they have a 205 width, a 45 series sidewall. And honestly, they are pretty grippy for what you need. This car is not an all out speeding sports car, but it's a perfect, well-balanced daily driving sports car. And this tire pretty much does the job. As far as the actual design of the wheel set, I think it fits this car perfectly. It's got that right amount of aggression. And I love the fact that it's not just blatantly silver. It's actually this kind of darker graphite color. So next up, we come back to the rear of the Miata. And this is probably one of the more controversial areas of the car. So for one, you do have the MX-5 badge. Everybody knows this as the MX-5 Miata. You have Skyactiv G badging. So that's Mazda's branding for their newer, more modern engine technology. Let's talk about the taillight unit here because this one, I'm in a mix. I don't know how I feel about it. So you do have an LED brake light unit and condescent bulb for the turn signal. And then you do have LED running lights, which look actually really cool. But the actual shape of the taillight, I'm not really sold on completely. I think it looks kind of, I don't know, gaudy in a way. It doesn't look consistent with the rest of the car, especially because this is rounded and the front is so angular and angry. So I'm, I'm kind of lost of where they chose this design. Let me know what you guys think. I think I'm the only one. I think a lot of people like this design, but everybody's opinion is their own. So um, back here, 
you do have your reverse light built into the bumper here so they kind of split it up here which is decent so and then outside of that your backup camera is actually mounted directly smack dab in the middle you couldn't have put it somewhere else i guess not but say la vie it they had to put it somewhere one thing i will say you do have a dual exit exhaust here, but I'm disappointed because it looks like such an afterthought. I feel like they could have put a single on each side and integrated it into the bumper, but they didn't. And I feel like that is a very, very, I don't even know how to describe it. I feel like that was a missed opportunity for them stylistically, but overall, still very clean design in the back. And just like every other Miata before it, it does have an okay sized trunk. Let me show you what I mean. So there's two ways to open the trunk. You've got a button here on the left hand side of the actual steering column area, or you can just simply look on the key fob and press and hold this button here. Once you get it open, you can see the opening for the trunk is bigger than you'd think, but it's still tiny considering the car it is but there is a pretty good amount of depth in here. So you can see my bag, you've got everything, tire wrench, toolkit. You do have a light here, which it's interesting because you can turn the light on and off yourself. I think that's actually very different, but overall it's a decent sized trunk. You might be able to fit a bag of golf clubs. Maybe that's a stretch, but overall you can definitely get groceries in this car and not have to worry about space too much. Now, let's get to the inside of the 2021 Mazda MX-5 Miata Grand Touring trim. So, first things first, this is the top trim. So you do have leather seats. These are gonna be the black leather seats. You do have a Bose speaker system in this car. And yes, there are speakers in the headrest and you do have this nice little Bose badging here. I actually really like that. The steering wheel is leather wrapped as well. You do have Bluetooth and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is actually wireless on the Grand Touring model for 2021. On the door card here, you're gonna see that the sole red actually goes into the door card itself. It's really, really nice. And then you have this kind of faux carbon fiber trim here. It actually looks really nice. It would be cool to see if they actually use real carbon fiber on some of their other trims. So um, window switches, lock, unlock, window lock, which is interesting in a two door car. And then your mirror adjustments there. Your handle here, this metallic finish is really, really nice. I just wish it would have continued with the actual door lock mechanism here. So back to the seats. These are actually gonna be completely manual seats. You do have a thigh extender here, which is actually pretty interesting. So you can extend your thigh support. You do have a lever here to change the incline and decline of the seat, but you're not really gonna be changing much of the seat there. And then you do have a bar to move it forward and backwards if you need to. Over here on the left-hand side, you do have your traction control button and your lane departure warning systems that you can actually turn off with just a simple button. And then the vents here are gonna be circular. Now, let's actually get in so I can show you a little bit more. So as a Miata should be, this one is a six speed manual. So I'm gonna go ahead and start it. And yes, you have push button start. Sounds really nice. Once you start it up, you're gonna see on the left hand side, you do have a digital gauge. So from there, you can just click this info button. You can go through various pieces of information, not much, but you can. I'm gonna actually close the door here. So once you do that, you can sift through trip trip service and then i believe that'd be navigation directions but it also tells you your range and it tells you the speed limit there which i'm in a parking deck so five miles an hour seems right and then in the middle you have your tachometer which is really interesting because this is pretty much a all-out sports car that you would drive on the weekend but it's really cool to see that they have put the most performance oriented gauge directly in the middle there and it is manual and on the right hand side you do have your speedometer now make note this little black area here will actually just tell you what gear you're in and it'll actually tell you what gear you should shift into for the best fuel economy for the infotainment system you do have this seven inch screen and no it is not a touch screen you actually have to access it 
through these buttons here in this knob. So you have that, home button, nav, music slash media, and then your volume knob is actually right down here. So it's kind of interesting. Now, this being a grand touring trim, you do have heated front seats. You do have your USB hookup for your phone. And then you do have standard climate controls here with automatic functions. And then your vents here are gonna be circular, but your middle vent here is actually gonna be horizontal. And then another circular vent down there, okay? Your mirror here is gonna be an auto dimming mirror with home link. And it's so interesting because the actual side view mirror for the driver is gonna be auto dimming, but not the passenger mirror. It's really interesting. Now, other things to make note, this car being a grand touring trim, you do have auto rain sensing wipers here, which is also nice. Like I said earlier, automatic headlights that are also fully dynamic and auto leveling. So just make note of that. And then overall, I wanna get back to the steering wheel. It looks really nice. It feels really nice as well. It's a little on the thinner side in terms of the actual grip slash girth. That's what she said. Um, but overall, it still feels really, really nice. And the Mazda badge is directly in the middle here. So let me know what you guys think of this interior because it's actually pretty, pretty nifty. People who are gonna be wondering how to get this top up, and speaking of which, this is the new gray top that's available for 2021. So all you have to do is find this latch, you press it, and it's actually spring loaded. And then all you have to do is literally just bring it up. And then I'm gonna get in here. And then you just bring it down. And then I'm gonna do this one handedly. Bring it down, hook it in, and then you just pull. And that's it. And then to undo the top, you just pull, unlatch, and then bring it off get out the car here and then you literally just push it down until it latches literally that easy and then you're ready to drive and it still has a small little wind deflector built in there so that is all it takes all right so we are driving what is hailed as probably the best-selling sports car in history period and i believe that is true so this is the 2021 mazda mx5 miata grand touring and yes this is a six-speed manual and i know some of you guys have been saying oh you know why don't you face the road when you're doing your commentary while driving and at the end of the day because that's what it is it's a video of me doing commentary of the driving aspects of this car versus you know you just watching the road but if it's really a deal breaker with you guys i will invest in more recording equipment so anyways so driving this car for one it is tiny but i fit comfortably in it because i'm five nine i'm not a big guy so for me this isn't anything okay now I will say this transmission feels amazing the throws are like the perfect length you always know what gear you're gonna be in and the engines extremely responsive because again it's a naturally aspirated engine so it's a two-liter four-cylinder got hundred eighty one horsepower and about hundred and fifty one pound-feet of torque so this thing has some get up and go and for those people who think those are weak numbers, you have to understand that this car is incredibly light. So, the power to weight ratio in this car is fantastic. Now, other things to make note in this car is that I actually really do like the exhaust tone in this thing. It actually does sound pretty good for what it's worth. Now, the reason why I love this car is because, and you've heard me say it in other videos, Miata Syndrome. What do I mean by that? I mean, you can drive this car and put the pedal to the metal and still be within speed limits. But the crazy thing is, when you're going like 45 in this thing, it feels like you're going 80. It really does. You know, the slightest speed makes you feel like you're going a lot faster. And that's part of the allure of the Miata, you know? You can take a turn 
twice as fast as you can in most other cars because this thing has such a low center of gravity and it's just the perfect balance. This thing almost has a perfect 50-50 weight distribution. So because of that, this car is incredibly balanced. It, it really is, you know? And Mazda is trying to go a little bit more upmarket and I think they're doing a pretty good job. And I bring that up because you know, the material quality in this car is fantastic. There's no rattles or anything. I will say, though, the, uh, the thing that I will say about this car is that the suspension is actually a little bit on the firm side, and you can feel every bump on the road. Not really a deal breaker for me by any stretch because it doesn't bother me. But overall, it is really, really cool to drive this thing. This thing surprisingly turns heads everywhere I go, which is kind of strange to me because this generation Miata has been out since what, 2015, 2016? Maybe even earlier than that. So I feel like people would have seen this a lot by now, but people kind of haven't. So this really is a niche car. You know, you have to really have some money lying around to own one of these. You know, this one stickers at about 33,000, I believe. So it's a decent chunk of change. And people are like, well, it doesn't seem like a performance bargain. And to be fair, it kind of is because at the end of the day, this car is a premium car made for carving canyons. And it does exactly that really well. Now, one thing that is a little bit different with this one versus my NA Miata is that this one does take premium gas, which I thought was a little bit different there. So, but it only costs maybe about 30 or so dollars to fill this thing up, but it gets fantastic gas mileage. This thing gets, it's rated at 34 highway, but if you're ringing out the gears like I do, you're not getting 34 highway. I think I was averaging maybe, I actually wasn't averaging anything that bad. I was averaging about, I would say 25 to 27, which honestly isn't that bad. It really isn't. I love driving this thing. It's so fun. It really is a go-kart. And it is one of the last new cars you can buy with a true manual transmission. And I'm not going to knock the automatics for those who don't know how to drive stick. I'm really not because I'm not the type of person to be like, oh, only a man can drive a stick. No, like that's super egotistical. Some cars I would prefer in an automatic where most people would prefer a stick. But like this car, I truly do think to get the most out of this car, you need to get it in a stick. That's just, that's my opinion. Okay, but you can get an automatic as an option on this car. Now, I will say clutch feel in this car is incredible. It's, it is light, but it's incredibly responsive. The grip, it grips pretty much down low. And you don't ever have to guess like when it grabs or anything. It, it's really, really easy to drive. And honestly, if you're looking to learn how to drive stick and maybe you have the option of purchasing one of these, this would be a fantastic car to learn how to drive a manual on. I wholeheartedly mean that. So if you're considering that, do it. So overall, I think this car is incredible for what it is. It is an all out sports car that you can take the top down on. I think the looks are pretty killer. And overall, the build quality in this thing is fantastic. And it's got things that are true to a Miata. And this car will always have a cult following as it is the best selling sports car of all time. So, and I think this continues that tradition. This is a 21 model, so I'm not sure how much longer this generation is actually gonna be in production. But, you know, they might be releasing new ones shortly. And who knows what that's going to entail. So, let me know what you guys think of the MX-5 Miata. You know, tell me, tell me your thoughts. I, I really want to see what people are currently thinking in today's age about a car like this. So, without further ado, I do want to thank Mazda for lending me this car for a week. It was definitely a treat. And then, 
definitely want to thank you guys, especially if you've been subscribed to the channel. I love the support. And if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button if you don't want to miss any content. And don't forget, guys, I do have a TikTok now. So you guys go check that out, and I'll see you on the next review.